so dear students today we will discuss about a very important and interesting topic that is lungs and uh, lungs we know they are the primary organs of respiration and there are two lungs right and left lungs this is right lung and here is the left lung which are enclosed in the pleural cavity within the thoracic cavity so they are situated in the thoracic cavity on either side of mediastinum so the gap between the two lungs is called as mediastinum and these lungs are enclosed in pleural sac the main function of the lungs is to oxygenate the blood so it uh, main function is to exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between inspired air and blood and lungs are attached to heart and trachea by their roots and pulmonary ligaments and if we see a new born baby and people living in a clean environment the lungs are rosy pink in color but in people living in a polluted areas are those uh, who are like smokers and the lungs are almost brown gray or black in color and they are spotted and they appear to be mottled uh, in appearance due to the inhaled carbon particles in adults normally the lungs are spongy in texture and if we press we can hear a crackling sound which is called crepitation so it they crepitate when we touch or press them and uh, due to the presence of air in their alveoli and they float in water normally and in fetuses and chill uh, still born children the lungs are solid and they do not crepitate on touch due to the absence of air in their alveoli and they sink in water so these are few things which are interesting about lungs let's see the external features of lungs each lung is large conical pyramidal shape and uh, with its base resting on the diaphragm so here is the base base is also called as diaphragmatic surface because they rest over the diaphragm and uh, the lung bases uh, which they rest on the diaphragm they descend during inspiration and ascend during expiration so the right lung is larger when you see the two lungs the right one is the larger lung compared to the left right is almost larger and also heavier than the left lung right lung it weighs approximately around 700 grams and left lung it is slightly lesser weight which weighs around approximately around 650 grams and it is larger right is larger and heavier than the left but uh, if we see the height the right looks appears to be shorter and stouter than the left and right dome of diaphragm and is uh, slightly higher than the left dome because right side in the abdomen liver is present which is a heavier organ that is the reason the which uh, right dome is at a higher level than the left lobe let's see the lobes and fissures the right lung has got three lobes normally it has got three lobes upper middle and the lower which is called upper middle and inferior superior middle and inferior and it has got two fissures one oblique fissure the other is the horizontal fissure whereas the left lung left lung has got two lobes superior and inferior and the fissure it has got only a single fissure called as oblique fissure so the lobes are separated by deep prominent fissures on the surface of the lung so right lung we know it is divided into three lobes superior middle and inferior by two fissures oblique fissure and a horizontal fissure
and left lung is divided into two lobes superior and inferior by an oblique fissure so coming to the oblique fissure oblique fissure acts as a plane of cleavage so that during inspiration the upper part of the lung expands forwards and laterally whereas the lower part of the lung expands downwards and backwards so in x ray chest pa view the horizontal fissure is visible in 60% of the cases the oblique fissure is usually visible in x ray in chest lateral view so in pa view we can appreciate horizontal fissure in lateral view we can also appreciate oblique fissure and it is imperative to identify the complete fissure before performing lobectomy so lobectomy means removal of complete lobe so before removing the lobe it is important for the uh, surgeon to uh, identify the fissure completely so they have to identify the complete fissure before performing lobectomy so the removal of the lobe of the lung because the individuals with incomplete fissures are more prone to develop post operative air leakage than those of complete fissures now let's learn how to keep these lungs in anatomical position and determine its site the site determination cannot be determined by the number of fissures and lobes as they are variable the side of the lung can be determined by holding the lung in such a way that the conical end that is the apex this is the apex which has to be on the top so apex is directed upwards and the broader base which is towards downwards it has to be directed downwards base is nothing but the diaphragmatic surface and it convex coastal surface so the outer surface is the convex coastal surface it is directed outwards and its flat uh, medial surface presents a hilum so we can see this is the hilum on the medial surface which has to be faced on the medial side and the anterior border is the thin border and posterior border is usually thick so it's uh, i'll just repeat its conical end that is the apex should be upwards so here is the apex should be directed upwards base directed downwards and its convex coastal surface is directed outwards and its flat medial surface presents a hilum it is directed inwards medially and its thin margin is the anterior margin this is the thin anterior margin here also we can see this is the thin anterior margin so the anterior margin the thin margin should be faced anteriorly and posterior margin that is the posterior bound border is rounded so it is called vertebral border so posterior border is the vertebral border which is rounded so by seeing the anterior and posterior border we can determine so this is the right lung whereas this is the left lung so this is how we determine the side of the lung moving on to the root and hilum of the lungs the lungs are attached to the trachea and heart by principal bronchi and pulmonary vessels uh, respectively means uh, principal bronchi connects the lungs to the trachea and pulmonary vessels connects the lungs to the heart so the root of the lung it lies opposite to t5 to t uh, t7 vertebral bodies means you can see this is the hilum so this is called as the root of the lung through which the structures go in and come out of the lung it is present from the level of t5 to t7 vertebral bodies the hilum is uh, the triangular area where the root is uh, located so around which the visceral pleura reflects to form parietal pleura 
so the pleura the visceral pleura reflects to form parietal pleura and the place where the structures that is the root uh, they enter and they leave the lung let's see the structures forming the root of the lung or structures present in the hilum of the lung the root of the lung consists of structures passing through the hilum the arrangement of structures in the hilum of the left lung you can remember by mnemonic a b v a b and v so in you can remember as a b v that is in superior to inferior direction a stands for artery that is pulmonary artery and b stands for principal bronchus left principal bronchus and v stands for pulmonary veins so here in this image the veins are shown as pinkish and uh, the artery is shown in blue color because the pulmonary artery carries the deoxygenated blood and pulmonary veins carry the oxygenated blood so this is how they are present apart from this we can see some bronchial vessels also bronchial nerve plexus and even the lymphatic uh, plexus and lymph nodes are also present in the hilar area so this is the hilum of left lung let's see the hilum of the uh, right lung so in uh, it is the same sequence in the right lung as well but in addition to the single bronchus there is one more bronchus called as ip arterial bronchus so above to the artery is ip arterial below the artery it is called hip arterial this is so the structures in order in the left hilum are first is the bronchus that is ip arterial bronchus then a a stands for pulmonary artery so this is pulmonary artery i am writing short forms and then again b that is hip arterial bronchus then v pulmonary veins you can remember as ba bv as the short form to remember the structures passing through the hilum of right lung so among all these structures the bronchus is the most uh, posterior in the hy lung hilum if you see the bronchus is on the most posterior aspect of the lung so there are two pulmonary veins at the hilum so not single the pulmonary veins are usually two in number and uh, similar arrangement on both right and left side coming to the bronchus bronchus and bronchial vessels that is the arteries and veins are always posterior most in the structure so if you see from the anterior to posterior this is anterior side here is the posterior and this is the hilum of right lung so here is the posterior side of both the hilum and this is the anterior side so you can see from anterior to posterior anterior most are the veins then in middle will be the artery and the posterior most will be the bronchi so the lymphatics and pulmonary nerve plexus are also present in the hilum let's see some clinical aspect of this hilum the hilar shadow in the chest radiograph that is in the x ray of uh, pa view that is postero anterior view the root of each lung casts a radio opaque shadow called as hilar shadow in the medial one third of the lung field so the shadow is in fact cast by the pulmonary vessels when seen end to end on the enlargement of the bronchopulmonary lymph nodes that is the hilar lymph nodes enlargement increases the density of hilar shadow 
so that is the importance of this hilum and appearance of uh, hilar shadows in the radiographs okay let us discuss about the apex of right and left lungs the apex is uh, rounded and it is blunt the supi it, in, it is the superior end of the lung and it extends into the root of the neck so if you see it extends into the root of the neck here is the first rib so it extends beyond the first rib into the root of the neck so it is about 3 cm superior to the anterior end of first rib so this is the first rib anterior end so approximately 3 cm superior to the anterior end of the first rib and 2.5 cm above the medial end of the clavicle that is medial one third of the clavicle so from the clavicle here is the clavicle this is the medial end of the clavicle from the medial end to the apex it is approximately 2.5 centimeters and it is covered by the cervical pleura and supra pleural membrane which is called as Simpson's fascia supra pleural membrane is otherwise called as Simpson's fascia which covers the uh, apex of the lungs and prevents the during inspiration they prevents the apex of the lung engorging into the root of the neck let's talk about the relations of the apex anteriorly the apex is related to subclavian artery which grooves the apex in front and internal mammary artery and it is also related to scalenus anterior so these are anterior relations posteriorly it is related to the neck of the first rib and structures in front of the neck of the first rib so ventral ramus of the first thoracic nerve first posterior intercostal artery first posterior intercostal vein and sympathetic chain so all these structures are related to the apex are separated from the apex by supra pleural membrane or Simpson's fascia let's talk about the cancer of lung apex the cancer may spread to involve the neighboring structures such as subclavian or brachiocephalic vein or subclavian artery or phrenic nerve causing signs and symptoms like uh, edema in the neck and face and arm due to venous engorgement if subclavian vein is involved or brachiocephalic veins are involved it may result in the edema in the neck and face and arm due to the venous engorgement means venous distension then compression of subclavian artery results in the diminished uh, brachial and radial pulse so there will be diminished the radial peripheral rad, uh, brachial or the radial pulse because of the compression of subclavian artery then uh, if the phrenic nerve is involved it results in the paralysis of half of the diaphragm which is called as paralysis of hemidiaphragm so these are the structures which may get involved in cancer of apex of lung so the next syndrome which we can discuss here is pan coast syndrome it occurs due to the involvement of the structures related to the posterior aspect of the apex of the lung by the cancer of the lung so if the posterior aspects are affected then it is called as pan coast syndrome uh, clinical features of pan coast syndrome are erosion of the first rib and pain along the medial side of the forearm and hand and wasting of the uh, small muscles in the hand due to the involvement of the ventral ramus of T1 and it also identified by Horner's syndrome. Horner's syndrome is due to the involvement of sympathetic chain where the typical symptoms of Horner's syndrome is drooping of upper eyelid which is called as ptosis, constriction of the pupil which is called meiosis and decreased sweating and on the affected side of the face so these are the symptoms associated with Horner's syndrome okay let's talk about the base or the diaphragmatic surface of right and left lung the base is a lower semilunar concave surface so it is lower semilunar concave surfaces on each side 
and which rest on the dome of respective diaphragm means right lung rest on the right dome of the diaphragm and left lung uh, rests on the left dome of diaphragm so coming to the relations on the right side the lung is separated from the liver by the right dome of diaphragm and on the left side the left lung is separated from the spleen and fundus of the stomach by the left dome of diaphragm the base of the right lung is deeper because it is more convex so the right one is more convex then the left because the right one uh, because below the right dome is more convex and below the right dome there is a heavier organ called as the liver that is the reason so the base of the right lung is deeper and it is uh, more convex upwards and because of the right dome of the diaphragm rises to the more superior level due to the presence of the liver underneath it so that is about the right uh, dome and the right and right uh, crust of the dome of diaphragm is also thicker because it has to uh, during inspiration it has to press down the liver down uh, during inspiration so let us discuss about the borders of right and left lung already i said during side determination anterior border is thin border and uh, it is thin and shorter than the posterior border the anterior border of the right lung is vertical so this is the right lung the anterior border it is almost vertical down so it is vertical whereas the anterior border on the left lung presents a wide notch which is called as cardiac notch so you can see here so this is cardiac notch so which is occupied by the heart and pericardium so we know the heart is present in the left side of our body so the left lung anterior border shows a cardiac notch which is a very good uh, differentiating feature from the right side and in this region that is in the left cardiac uh, notch region the heart and pericardium is uncovered by the lung hence this region is responsible for an area of uh, superficial cardiac dullness so below the cardiac notch it presents a tongue like projection from the left lung which is called as lingula so this called as lingula next about the posterior border posterior border is otherwise called as vertebral border because it is related to the thoracic vertebra on each uh, each lung is related to thoracic vertebra posteriorly and it is quite thick and rounded the posterior border is quite thick and rounded and it extends from the spine c7 vertebra to the spine t10 vertebra so posterior border extends from c7 till t10 so c7 on each side till t10 so next about the inferior border inferior border is thin and it separates the base of the lung from the costal surface so this is the inferior border which separates the base we can see base here the other side surface is the costal surface so next moving on to the costal surface costal surface it is covered by the costal pleura we can see anteriorly costal surface so costal surface it is related to the lateral thoracic wall and uh, from the ribs and the intercostal spaces along with its contents the number of the ribs related to this uh, costal surface are upper six ribs in mid clavicular plane so here is the mid clavicular plane if we draw a line upper six ribs means first second third fourth fifth six ribs are related to the mid clavicular plane then upper eight ribs in mid axillary plane so from here 1 2 3 
फोर्थ इज हेयर फिफ्थ सिक्स सेवन एंड एथ सो दिस इज मिड एक्सिलरी प्लेन वेर एज अपर टेन रिप्स इन द स्कैपुलर पोस्टीरियरली इन द स्कैपुलर रीजन इट इज रिलेटेड टू अपर टेन रिप्स सो दैट इज हाउ द कोस्टल सर्फेस वी कैन डी मार्केट इन टू रिलेशन विद द रिप्स नेक्स्ट मूविंग ऑन टू द मीडियल सर्फेस सो द मीडियल सर्फेस इज डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट स्मॉल पोस्टीरियर पार्ट विच इज कॉल्ड एज वर्टिब्रल पार्ट सो हियर इज द वर्टिब्रल पार्ट and larger anterior part which is called mediastinal part from here to here stinal part same thing on the other side this is the left lung here is the right lung and picture below is the left lung so here this is the vertebral part and from here to here whole surface is the mediastinal part so let's see the relations of the medial surface of the lung the vertebral part is related to the vertebral column posterior intercostal vessels and greater and lesser splanchnic nerves so i'll enlist now the vertebral part is related to thoracic vertebra that is vertebral column along with the intervertebral disc column thoracic vertebral column and it is related to posterior intercostal nerves greater and lesser splanchnic nerves so these are the relations let's talk about the mediastinal part the mediastinal part presents hilum both in the right and left so this here also this is the hilum of left lung so both the sides it is related to the hilum if this hilum is meant for the structures like uh, the mediastinal part presents the hilum so the we know that it's right hilum and the left hilum and it is related to the mediastinal structures like uh, heart uh, great blood vessels and nerves and since the right and left surfaces of the mediastinum uh, consists of different structures there is a different structures so the relations on the mediastinal surface of the uh two lungs are different so first we shall discuss about the mediastinal surface of right lung so let's see the mediastinal relations on the right lung so it is uh, mainly consists of right atrium it's so it is related to the right atrium and it uh, which makes a cardiac impression so this impression this impression is called as the cardiac impression where right atrium of heart is related then above the right atrium are uh, present the superior vena cava there is a shallow groove for superior vena cava superior vena cava is related and the right brachiocephalic vein is related and it is also related to the azygous vein so it is also related to azygous vein along the root of the hilum so this is arch of azygous vein so behind these structures uh, are present the trachea and esophagus so here is this is the anterior side and this is the posterior side of the lung so this is the esophagus which is present on the posterior aspect and in front of the esophagus is trachea
so these are the structures present behind so behind the structures present are the trachea and esophagus and forms a tracheal and esophageal grooves respectively the azygous vein that is a large venous channel which runs upwards along the side of the vertebral border so we know this is the vertebral border and this is the anterior thin border so which is along the vertebral border it arches along the root of the lung so it arches over the root of the right lung and it opens into the superior vena cava so we can see that uh, where the right brachiocephalic vein opens into the superior vena cava there we can see the joining of azygous vein both converges to form the superior vena cava on the right side so finally it terminates in the superior vena cava making a groove forming a groove along the root of right lung let's see the nerves related on the mediastinal relations there are three nerves which are related right phrenic nerve so this is the right phrenic nerve right vagus and also right sympathetic chain so vagus and sympathetic chain is not depicted here sympathetic chain is present near the vertebral border posteriorly so these are the three nerves related to the sympathetic chain and right sympathetic chain runs in the paravertebral gutter and right vagus it forms pulmonary and esophageal plexus whereas the right phrenic nerve it runs uninterruptedly downwards towards the diaphragm where it uh, innervates into the right dome of diaphragm now let's see the mediastinal relations of left lung so this is the left lung so mediastinal relations left lung left ventricle makes a cardiac impression so this large area this part is cardiac impression made by left ventricle and uh, aorta aorta forms a groove uh, for aorta present along the hilum of the left lung so this is arch of aorta which continues to form descending aorta descending thoracic aorta so they are related so arch of relate arch of the aorta is related along the hilum like arching around the hilum just like azygous vein how it arches over the hilum of the right lung so the aorta ascends at first and then it arches over the left lung root and then descends behind the lung root here and the three great vessels are brachiocephalic trunk brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery are related to the uh, left lung on the mediastinal side related to the arch of aorta so they are branches from the arch of aorta we can see the impressions of brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery which arise from the arch of aorta and they ascend up to reach the root of the neck then talking about the esophagus esophagus as it descends down through the thorax it shifts from the left behind the heart and crosses the line of the descending aorta so you can see here this so here is the esophagus and we can see along with the esophagus the duct is the the green color duct is the thoracic duct and we can also appreciate the impression for the trachea trachea and the nerves related are three nerves that is the left phrenic left vagus nerve so first is the left uh, phrenic and left vagus this thick nerve is the left vagus 
which forms esophageal and cardiac plexus left vagus is the nerve which held away from the trachea by aortic arch so you can see the left vagus which is held away by the trachea by the aortic arch and here it gives off a recurrent laryngeal nerve so the left vagus gives rise to recurrent laryngeal nerve left recurrent laryngeal nerve is given by the left vagus here and which hooks round under the aortic arch and uh, it ascends up into the tracheoesophageal groove so it hooks round and then it ascends up into the tracheoesophageal groove that is about the left recurrent laryngeal nerve and uh, below the aortic arch the vagus nerve runs behind the lung root and breaks up into posterior pulmonary and esophageal plexus and it is also related to the left sympathetic chain on the right side right sympathetic similarly posterior most the third nerve is the left sympathetic chain so the nerves are three left phrenic left vagus which gives rise to recurrent laryngeal nerve and the third nerve is the left sympathetic chain so this completes the mediastinal relations on the left side the left mediastinal relations are completed with this so let us see the points of auscultation to hear the lobes of lungs so the superior lobe of the right lung is audible above the fourth rib the middle lobe of the right lung is audible between the fourth and sixth rib the lower lobes of both the lungs both right and left lungs are audible below the sixth rib on the front and the inferior lobes of the right and left lungs are examined on the back especially in the region of triangle of auscultation so what is the triangle of auscultation it is the uh, area where it is located near the inferior angle of scapula posteriorly so posteriorly just near the inferior angle of scapula there is an area called as triangle of auscultation let's see the boundaries of it superiorly the triangle of auscultation it is bounded by the lower border of trapezius inferiorly latissimus dorsi and laterally by the medial border of the scapula so these are the boundaries of triangle of auscultation so this completes the lungs external features and its relations thank you